So recently, the latest ISC episode has caused a little bit of a stir, I guess you could say, within the Star Citizen community. And I want to kind of give you my point of view as an avid player versus player, I guess you could say, aficionado. And the point of view that most players within the PvP community are going to take on these new content updates coming to Pyro and how I think the future of this will actually play out versus what CIG wants to play out. I think CIG suffers a little bit from the dreamer concept where a lot of times they design something and they have the best intentions for it. But what reality ends up happening is it doesn't go the way they want and they don't seem to want to course correct quick enough to really have any kind of meaningful impact. I mean, take a look at what happened with Ghost Hollow, uh, you know, Security Post Korea, Jump Town and the lack of activity when it comes around. So much of what CIG does in the last few years has been good on paper or at least a good idea, but in reality doesn't take into account human nature, doesn't take into account how people are actually going to play these mechanics and what the future of that will actually look like. And they don't seem to want to learn from these mistakes. So they just keep on doing the same thing over and over and over again and hopefully sell some more ships to buy them time. But I think myself and many of us, if you're watching this video, probably feel quite similar. And if you're new to the channel and you're new to these kind of takes, then sit back and enjoy it and you know, open your mind a little bit, maybe look at things from a slightly different perspective, um, you know, through what I call the PVP lens. So let's get started. So in the new content update coming out for Pyro, there's two things that are kind of happening. One are called contested zones, which are these areas within all the different stations of Pyro, Checkmates, all these other big stations. And what's gonna happen is these stations will have essentially quote unquote gray zones or contested zones where you'll go through an airlock and essentially the rules are gone. It's basically Star Marine as soon as you walk through those doors. And the concept I think they're trying to shoot for is a much more raid style game, something like you'd see from Escape from Tarkov, where you enter an area, you go in, you get the loot you're looking for, and you make it out. And once you make it out, you're safe. By making it out, it means that you're able to make it out of the zone and return to the normal part of the station, which are called the green zones, which are armistice zones you cannot shoot, you cannot be hurt, you're safe, which in my personal opinion is probably a good idea because when I first loaded into Pyro during one of the play tests, there were no green zones and as soon as people left their sleeping cabin, it was immediately engaging on site and it was definitely a frustrating experience. So I'm glad that they've learned from that lesson. Now these gray zones or contested zones within these stations, I don't think personally are going to work like the way they intend it. I think what's likely going to happen is you're going to have people camping like crazy. I mean, just people sitting in wait, camping like crazy. I mean, as long if there's no raid timers and there's no thing to force you to you know to switch position, you're going to have people sitting at natural choke points. Uh, like how extract camping was in, in Escape from Tarkov and also the camping that goes on in something like, you know, Day Z, where people spend days just sitting in one spot, just camping and waiting for that advantage. And any kind of death PvP open world survival kind of game, players will always play the way that will give them the maximum benefit for the least amount of effort. And if that means that they have to wait around for a bit until someone comes crawling into their area, they're going to wait for those opportunities. Now, sometimes I'm sure you'll get some cool, exciting moments where another team goes in and another team engages and you have this, this, this moment of, I guess you could say, exciting combat. But the reality is most people in Star Citizen don't play together. And so what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up having people walk into essentially a meat grinder where one or maybe two people um, are going to walk into groups of player versus player coordinated teams of five or more. And it's going to be absolutely 
vicious. They're going to walk into this absolute nightmare where people are going to be camping corners, using grenade launchers to knock, <laughs> knock each other over. And it's just going to be like essentially these players farming other players for their gear content loot um, and posting, I guess you could say, their salty takes and uh, stuff like that online. Star Citizen is at a weird spot, I find where a majority of the people who play Star Citizen are not particularly interested in intense PvP all the time. And so what this has done is the culture of Star Citizen over time has driven a lot of the very PvP focused people out, not only due to bad server performance, but also bad game design and bad execution on mechanics that allow PvP to flourish. And so what you're left off with is a large swath of players that are more interested in the very casual experience, the kind of theme part experience. And what's going to end up happening is they're going to start engaging in these gray zones or these contested zones. And they're just going to be absolutely wasted by groups of small coordinated teams of PvPers, which will happen. Because the reward for being a group of PvPers that know what they're doing and just camping those areas is I get all the loot all the time and all these casuals coming in i mean they're gonna have no chance like truly no chance now i think it's a good thing for star citizen for us to actually have more of this stuff happen to have more pvp content to have more opportunities to do it but as we've seen in the past with ghost hollow jump town and security post korea is they don't incentivize PvP. The risk does not equal the reward. And that is a huge, huge problem that CIG after 10 years hopefully would have figured out by now. But unfortunately, as we can see clearly, it's not been figured out. Security Post Korea still remains extremely, uh, I guess you could say, uninviting in, te in terms of actually getting in there and doing the mission to get the drugs out. Uh, Ghost Hall remains mostly bugged and the amount of money you get for the amount of risk you have to take is very minimal. So most people just stay away from it. And Jump Town makes basically hilariously low amount of money for the risk and effort it takes to do it. And most people just do these events out of sheer boredom to get content rolling because the Persistent Universe is quite essentially for lack of a better word dead there's really nothing to do in the persistent universe and there's no incentives to get people to want to try stuff out because the trick here is not trying to get the people who are interested in pvp more interested in it the trick here is to get pvp into the hands of people who want to try it and you want to scale the risk and the reward depending on how far they go in. And if you incentivize exciting loot and unique gear at the end of, I guess you could say, this PvP uh, meat grinder, then people are going to want to do it more. It's going to want to promote people to get out there. You're going to have much more player interaction. And the health and longevity of your game is just simply going to get better. I mean, we look at games like Dota, Grand Theft Auto... Um, Daisy, all these top games on Twitch, all of it has to do with the interactions of players versus each other and how that plays out in the world. You know, the whole PvPe kind of phenomenon where you are in a sandbox, it's PvP, but also you're fighting the world at the same time. This is a really good thing to do. And I think CIG needs to really lean into this kind of direction. And God forbid, we get a working economy that actually makes a little bit of sense to incentivize players who want to risk loading up their ships with expensive cargo, getting some people who are interested in combat to protect them so that they can all benefit from a high risk, high reward type situation. I would love to see a moment where you have entire hull seas loaded with like just Quantanium or something extremely expensive that would take these hauling ships you know days to complete the amount of money transactions just on this single load and to have them support each other to have pvpers come in and make sure that that ship gets to its location safely 
is going to be beneficial for everybody. But the low, I guess you could say the low risk, low effort, low reward type shipping, it's not really going to want people to get involved. It's not going to really force people to want to protect those things because the margins are just so small. The second thing that they introduced in ISC was these asteroid stations that are procedurally generated into procedurally generated stations. So you have these internal asteroids like a miniature Grim Hicks type situation where there are no green zones and whoever gets there first essentially claims them. Now how these will truly work out, will they be a mission that you pull off a contract and everyone has access to it like a like a certain kind of mission and everyone gets there? Will it be something that people stumble across themselves or will it be something more along the lines of it's like an event that pops up under priority? Whatever the case may be, it's likely, in my opinion, that it'll be a contract or some kind of event that pops up every once in a while and people are able to consolidate on that location and whoever takes the area, whether they start in space defending it and then they move on to the FPS side, internal inside the station, to eventually you know, reach the gold at the center of the station. Now they teased the secret to say like, we don't want to give it away, but I strongly believe that it's likely have something to do with perhaps wherever, whenever you get the, you know, I guess you could say the rare loot or the really expensive stuff at the, at the end of the, the quest, it'll probably set a self-destruct on the asteroid, which will destroy the asteroid because there has to be some kind of way to destroy the station or get rid of it after the mission has been completed because once people complete the mission it has to despawn a new one has to spawn up somewhere else so that the mission can continue and people can procedurally generate and have these exciting moments in the persistent universe this in my opinion is probably one of the best ideas i guess you could say where you have a high risk area that procedurally generates that allows for combined operations, space to air, to ground, that kind of stuff, um, which I think is really healthy for the game because it's not locking it down to popular stations where people are fighting around. You want to keep the PvP somewhere where it's off the beaten path and people choose out of their own decision to go there and take the risk rather than the risk coming to them uh, and them not being prepared, not wanting, and just you know being a difficult experience for them. Even though that's likely still going to happen because CIG hasn't figured out that the defensive systems that they've put out, the missiles and the turrets and the velocities and all that stuff, just simply are not enough to defend against any kind of basic trained uh, PvP crew that wants to go in and start engaging. And like my previous video, we spoke about what's going to probably happen in reality with the jump points where people are going to queue up in lines and somehow that is going to, I guess you could say, disincentivize groups of PVPers to come in and start shooting down other groups. They could be loaded with cargo, they could be trying to escape pyro, whatever the case may be, people are going to get absolutely destroyed at these choke points. And I think CIG has to seriously take a look at how they're going to do this. It's very likely, I hate to say it, it's extremely likely that CIG will put an armistice zone in these areas to the point where you cannot fire and people are just going to be able to queue up and go. It's disappointing because it's a very band-aid fixed for a difficult situation, but I guess we'll have to see as time goes on. Either way, the PvP lens of this, from my point of view, is contested zones are going to be a meat grinder for new players. And the new, I guess you could say, procedurally generated quest missions where you could take these asteroids, whatever they want to call these things, um, is the best idea I've seen to get people involved in PvP. But it really comes down to the game's combat has to be exciting and enjoyable for most people to want to get into PvP. And I think we all understand and all know, especially if you've been following this channel, that the state of player versus player combat when it comes to the space fighting side of things has been dramatically dropped to the floor. And I think it's at the detriment to everybody who plays the game, including new players and old players. CIG simply has to take responsibility for the absolutely terrible state 
of the master modes combat system and they have to start working on it probably sooner rather than later because the excuses that they come up with saying oh uh, we don't have time for it well i'm sorry cig you got to start making the time because if you don't start making the time i think a lot of players are going to be fed up so this was my opinion folks this was the pvp lens that some of the new content coming out leave your comments in the chat below Get involved in the conversation. Tell CIG what you feel about the combat systems in the game right now. So we either make the game the best it can be or we complain about it and nothing ever happens. If we can get CIG to understand that there's changes that need to be made, then we have hope for Star Citizen in the future. And either way, I'll see all you folks out for Pyro. My name was Avenger1. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.